11 traps to avoid that will cost you plenty of time, money, and relationships, according to the Bible here from the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon, as we're going to reference Proverbs here in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scriptures here, starting three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada, steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger, just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Seven Figure Squad Studios in the Money Smart Movement headquarters here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And uh, I'm fired up about wrapping up this series here, talking about this book here, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived, which is written by Stephen K. Scott. And over the last several weeks, I've been unpacking some of the things that he's written here in this book, referencing King Solomon's Secrets to Success, Wealth, and Happiness. If you'd love to purchase this book, I'll be putting the links down here below. So therefore, you can grab it. Some great work here, really um, digesting the books of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Now you can live a happy, wealthy, prosperous life according to God's word. Now, I'm very excited for this coming week because we interviewed from the author of Business Secrets from the Bible, who also wrote the book, Thou Shall Prosper, Rabbi Lappin. And for those of you who are Dave Ramsey fans, he's actually one of the best friends of Dave Ramsey over, I think, the last 12, 13 years. But um, interesting conversation I had with Rabbi Lappin on money, prosperity, really where money and what money stands for and how you can attain a higher level of success and happiness and wealth according to God's word and scripture. But uh, that interview is coming out here this week, so make sure you stay posted and subscribe to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. All right, so let's get right into it. What's some of the traps to avoid that will cost you a lot of money, time, relationships, sanity? Well, let's, let's go into it. So number one is oversimplification. Let's go to Proverbs chapter one, verse 22. It reads like this. How long, you simple ones, we love simplicity, for scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You know, oftentimes you uh, unpack a new subject matter, and uh, you try to say, well, let me just get the Reader's Digest version of this thing. Let me just hurry up and get to the point. And without looking into the matter, without studying things, without digesting and really doing your research, you just kind of want to tend to oversimplify the work without really understanding the nuances of what uh, subject matter that you're looking at. So King Solomon suggests that one of the traps to avoid in your process is just sheer trying to make things too simple, over simple, because sometimes things get either lost in translation or things get lost in oversimplification. Number two is presumption. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 27, verse one, and it reads like this. Do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth. You know, you're assuming that you got all day. You got all day. I got tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, we have plenty of time. You know, we just had a workshop this morning where one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people had in the multicultural community, 33, 30, we're going over a survey, it says 33 to 35% of people say they have a lot of time, plenty of time to plan for retirement. Now, as a side note, I personally don't individually believe in retirement for the sense of, let me just uh, accumulate a lot of money and let me just retire from my job and let me just sit on the couch and, and uh, click on uh, channels and let me just travel the world and there's no contribution or significance that you're building in your community in those years. Because I believe a lot of those years that you built up to to retirement should be going back to contributing back to the, uh, the mentoring, the help of the younger generation coming up. Well, back to my main point, back to presumption. Oftentimes you say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to assume a lot of things and in that haste, in that oversimplification, um, I'm going to presume you know what you're talking about and therefore I'm going to make a decision based on that premise for me going forward. And oftentimes people get lost. People say, you know what? I, I know somebody. I'll talk to them next week, tomorrow. And next thing you know, it might be too late. So don't presume that you have plenty of time. Number three, misplaced trust. Let me share with you a personal example that happened to me. Uh, about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, <clears throat> I was being personally recruited to join a radio show. Matt, you need to provide the financial commentary. Uh, you do the financial reports to our radio show on one of the largest networks, one of the largest uh, stations here in the Chicagoland area. You're going to get a lot of profile. 500, 600,000 people listen to this radio show on the weekend. We got two hours on the show. I said, okay, no problem. Without me looking into the matter, because I oversimplified it, because I presumed things were correct, I misplaced my trust. Come to find out these guys were running a scam. These guys were running a real estate investment ripoff type deal. I got caught up in the mix thinking that I was part of it. 
words, I was just being recruited to uh, provide the financial commentary. Make a long story short, these guys got slammed. These guys got barred uh, from ever doing this type of business in the state of Illinois. I had a f I legally fight my way to prove my innocence. I had no uh, 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 involvement with what they were doing on air. I was just simply providing the uh, radio uh, uh, show commentary in terms of finances. Make a long story short, right? I was right, but since I misplaced my trust, it cost me unnecessary legal fees. It cost me unnecessary time. It cost me unnecessary protection of my reputation, which I should have had a damage to begin with because I associated myself with the wrong people because I misplaced my trust, assuming that they're out to do the right thing. Number four, superficial appearances. Now, many of you, sadly, will fall into this very quickly because of social media. You look at somebody's profile, you look at somebody's Instagram, you look at somebody's Facebook, you look at somebody's website, everything looks professionally done. You oversimplify your decision, things look great, but at the end of the day, you don't ask questions, you don't ask things that might potentially avoid a lot of pain and unnecessary suffering, and guess what? you get taken for, and sadly it's happening a lot today because people buy into superficial appearances versus actually looking into things, and I'll discuss how to get over some of those matters as we continue. Number five is laziness. Because you have so many things going on, right, you're so busy, you get some of the biggest decisions you're about to make in your finances, the biggest decision you make in terms of your reputation, the biggest decision you make in terms of your growth of your business, but because you're lazy, you don't put yourself at work, you don't say, hey, let me study this, let me become a professional at my craft, let me study my competition. Let me study what's best practices. Let me study what people are doing right. So therefore I can avoid their mistakes and continue the things I'm doing right, add it with my flavor, add it to the difference of what I can bring to the table, and I can create a fantastic product or service for people who want to do business with me. But because of laziness, people don't do that. And if you're gonna avoid that trap, you'll be further ahead than everybody else. Next one is haste. Let's look at what King Solomon has to say about this here in Proverbs chapter 21, verse five. It reads like this. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Now we've discussed in previous episodes the word diligent. To remind you, here's what diligence means right here as we put up here on the screen. Oftentimes when we don't apply ourselves with diligence, the opposite of that is true, which is called haste. You're rushing into a decision. People say, well, everybody's doing this and everybody's doing that, but listen, you don't, potentially don't want to live everybody's life. And just because everybody is doing it doesn't mean it's potentially the right decision. It could be, but not all the time. And when you don't look into things that matter, when you are not diligent in your research, you're not diligent in your decisions, you fall into a trap of losing money, time, and energy, and potential relationships because you are hasty, rushing into the next decision. The next one is narrow vision, number seven. Let's look at what King Solomon has to say about this in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, and it reads like this. Without counsel, plans go awry, but in a multitude of counselors, they are established. See, when I was a young United States Marine, and I was thinking about getting involved in the insurance industry, and I'd, I'd ask my peers, hey, um, what do you think about me getting involved in the insurance industry? Ah, oh, Sapala, you know, just stay in the Marine Corps. All you know how to do is be a Marine. And I started asking myself, well, Man, Gunnery Sergeant, I appreciate you saying that. All I know I would be a Marine because we've served together and you've known me for the last eight years, but I want something out of my life that's much big, bigger and brighter. I want something, I, I, I want to live in these neighborhoods we keep driving by. I want to go to Newport Beach. I want to go to Fashion Island. I want to go to Dana Point. I want to go visit these areas, but I don't want to end up staying in the worst part of these areas. I want to stay in some of the best areas. How do we get to a point where I'm making money and we are living in these places? So Paula, it's never going to happen. You're just meant to be a Marine. You see, I refuse to accept that answer. They explained to me a narrow vision which I was able to define later. Once I started hanging around people who were enjoying these places, that actually owned these homes, they actually owned these yachts, they actually flew in these private jets, guess what started happening to me? My vision started to expand. They shared with me a life that I could potentially live if I chose to do the work, if I was diligent, if so I was willing to look into the matter. And oftentimes people say, you know what? Those are great for those people. Those are great for, only for rich people. Well, how come you can't be wealthy? We've discussed here many episodes in the past that God would love for you to be richly and financially blessed if you're willing to serve other people because serving other people is like serving Him. And when you're looking at the conversation I have with my Marines, the big conversation that a lot of people are exposed to today is what the mainstream media 
says about a certain topic. Just because this network says this, or this network says this, or this network says this, you got to understand that by now there's games being played in the media. And I've reduced it down to three things that the media gets paid to do. Number one, they, they get paid to share with you chaos. Number two is conflict. Number three is controversy. It's not necessarily to inform you, but they get paid. What's their outcome? The media's outcome is to what? To educate you? To inform you? Maybe to an extent. But I'm seeing chaos, conflict, and confusion happening all the time in the media, whether it's from the left, from the right, from the center. You have to expand your vision, research certain things, so therefore you're not jumping to conclusions, you're not hasty, you're not misplacing trust, and you're not oversimplifying your current situation and making an important decision. All right, number eight. Number eight is integrity. What do I mean by integrity? Well, you, you tell me, Matt, to avoid uh, integrity? No, no, no. Here's what I mean by that. The people that I've seen, myself included, okay? myself included, I've realized that some of the people that get taken for the most, <laughs> it's not the crooks. It's not the people trying to get, get one over on you. You know who gets taken over the most? It's the people that live with high amounts of integrity. <laughs> That's correct. So if you're, if you're a kind person, if you're a trustworthy type of person, you're a reliable type of person, the people that people uh, love to follow and you influence, guess what? Because you're honest and you live a life of integrity, you presume, back to presumption up here and oversimplify, you presume everybody else operates in the capacity or in the world you exist. I'll give you an example. Some of the biggest pains I've experienced in my entire life are from people in the church. Yes, people inside the church. Some of the biggest pains, financially speaking, time speaking, pains I've had, is because I wanted to inherently trust people that I thought were living with integrity, but without looking into the matter, I was taken for. I'll give you an example. I was looking to publish a book, and I wasn't happy with the book, and I wasn't happy with the deadline. Well, I'm an entrepreneur. You're not going to tell me to do certain things, tell me to do certain things, especially if you didn't pay me in advance to sign with your publishing company. I'm going to release this book. When I feel good about this book, I'm fine with how the writing came out, the draft, the second draft, the, the, uh, the preview edit, and the final copy. And I felt that this publishing company was rushing things, that they were being too hasty about their decision. I said, you know what? Let me pump the brakes. I'm not so sure if this relationship is working out. Uh, well, Matt, we need to make the catalog deadline. We need to make the catalog. I don't care about the catalog deadline. My name is being printed on this book. I don't want this book to be released. So uh, you're going to have, uh, have to pump the brakes. I'm sorry, Matt. Why, why, is it, why are you sorry? I said, well, quite frankly, you don't own the book. It's our book. Wait a minute. It's my name. Yes, Matt. But we own the rights to this book. We're going to publish whatever galley copy we got right now, even though if you don't really fully like it. I said, well, that's not happening. Well, I'm sorry, Matt. That's not up to your control. It's our book. We own the rights to this book. We're going to be publishing it. And I said, well, how do I make sure you don't publish the book? They said, well, you got to buy your rights back. Interesting. So when I go to buy, buy the rights back, anyway, a five-figure check later, I bought my rights back to make sure the Christian publishing company didn't publish my book. Now, is it completely their fault? No, I'm not going to put the blame on them. Guess what I put the blame on? Me. Because I didn't look into the matter. I didn't read my contracts. I didn't find out what happens if we didn't meet certain deadlines. I take the blame for that. I caused it. But yet they caused me pain that was unnecessary, initiated by who? Myself. And I'm thinking that just because you're a Christian publisher, you're a Christian entrepreneur, you're a Christian this, you're a Christian that, you're, also, you're supposed to be just as honest as I am, not necessarily true. And if you presume a lot of people are operating in that manner without making sure that they're taking care of you, you could potentially open yourself to unnecessary pain, uh, financial loss, and unnecessary suffering. So make sure that you, if you're walking walk with integrity, make sure you ask questions. Number nine, greed. I don't have to go much into this. If you operate not from a position of ambition, right, versus greed, where you're looking to win or gain at all costs, that will cause a trap for you. You might win short term, but your long term game, guess what? It's gonna eventually gonna catch up to you. Next one, arrogance. Listen, there's nothing I like more than a cocky, confident person. But there's a slight line between cocky, confident and arrogance because arrogance seems to be that somebody knows everything about everything and you can't tell them anything and their cup is full. They don't listen to you. They think they know everything about the subject matter. They don't want to be guided. They're not reasonable. That will cost you a lot of money if you or that person you're doing business with is arrogant. And last but not least, wrong priorities. 
instead of taking all these things into account, you'd rather Netflix, you'd rather hang out, you'd rather uh, relax, you'd rather have somebody else do it for you. And because if somebody else did it for you without the same amount of intensity that you would, or without the amount of due diligence that you would, or without making sure that they dot the I's and cross the T's like you would, guess what happens to you if you don't look into it because you have other priorities. Listen, if you're about to make a big financial decision, you might make a big decision with your career, your business, I hope and encourage you to look into the matter and prioritize yourself before you sabotage yourself. So what are some solutions that uh, King Solomon offers here in the Bible? Well, number one, don't be naive. Here's a definition of naive. Naive means showing a lack of experience, wisdom, or judgment. Again, let's reference what King Solomon has to say this in Proverbs chapter 22, verse three. It reads like this. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. See, a prudent man says, oh, red flag, oh, red flag, oh, red flag. Psh, let me take myself out of the decision. Let it pass. A person that's expressing naivete and doesn't have a checklist for making big decisions, they get taken for. They lose time. They lose money. Or they take the opportunity because they're naive without looking into the matter. And what happens to them? They make a short-term win, but long-term, they're really set back three, four, five, ten paces. Another scripture to reference here is Proverbs 14, verse 12, and it reads like this. There is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death. Pretty profound there by King Solomon. So some of these things happen to you if you don't look into the matter, if you don't do your research. You say, oh, this person must be doing this. But like, listen, I've seen a lot of people in the media, on social media, mainstream media, paid speakers, okay? And uh, listen, more power to them if that's the way they make their money. However, when I look into the matter, I realize, hmm, I asked the speaker, how do you make your money? How are you coaching me and the things you're coaching? Have you done it yourself? Do you have a proof of concept? How are you charging me X amount of dollars if you never actually built a business yourself? How do, you, how do you justify you charging me a coaching or consulting fee to help accelerate the growth of my business if you don't have, for me, 5, 10, 15 people I can call and ask to get references from to see how I could best utilize your services when working together with me? Are you afraid to give out references? You are. Oh, I'm just trying to protect my clients. Which, which clients then are willing to allow us to call them? Well, none of them. Well, do you have any clients you can even help us bounce things and ideas off of? Because you are the first person in our industry or a company or a senior region to be doing this type of work. Do you have anybody we can reference to? See, these are certain questions I'm asking when doing business with people. Or ask this question. Worst case scenario, I decided to back out of the deal. What's the big hiccup here? What's the big small details I need to look into. What's my charge? What's my early withdrawal fees? What's my uh, early, early penalties? What could there be? What could there potentially be? Because at the end of the day, who do you have to blame for your decisions? Other people? No, you got to blame you. You take ownership for your situation. You take ownership for your decision. Why? Because God's been trying to guide you. And it's up to you to make sure you're looking into the matter and say, hey, um, I'm a man. I'm a woman. How do I make the best decision possible? Because we never win the game by deferring the blame. Next one. If you want to have a solution to avoiding these traps, seek outside counsel. Again, let's look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. It reads like this. Without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. I hope that whatever decision you make with your money, your business, whatever opportunity you have coming your way that might advance and increase your potential, you surround yourself with people that are considered mentors. Mentors. And people often say, well, this person's mentoring me. This person's mentoring me. Yeah, on YouTube. This person's mentoring me. This person mentoring me. Yeah, on, uh, on, on uh, tweets, on Instagram. They're not a real mentor. Mentor is somebody who says, hey, listen, can I earn some of your time? Let me uh, unpack a subject matter with you. What would you do if you're in my situation? What are some of my blind spots? What are the things that I'm not seeing? That's something you have to earn a mentor. And by the way, side note, I've got nothing to sell you if you're watching this video. I've got nothing to sell you here. I'm not trying to tell you to go to my website and sign up for mentor. I have zero mentoring packages to sell you. For those of you out there that are skeptical out there and think, oh, here, here, here's a sales pitch. No, I hope that you just take this information for the betterment of your family, the betterment of your business, the betterment of your life, 
and you seek mentors out there, they will guide you, coach and teach you, and you find a way to say, hey, listen, I want you to mentor me because of one, two, three. And if you mentor me, I will, I will pay in action or in deed, one, two, three. That's how it's been with my mentor, Patrick Bed David. I'm going to ask him, say, hey, listen, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you to call me and text me at my demand, at my convenience. Please respond to me. Let me earn your trust. Let me earn your convenience. Let me earn your replies back on text. You don't owe me anything. Those are the things that help me get along with mentors and the people also that I choose to mentor. But if you're looking to make a big decision with your money, your business, your career, to expand your potential, seek outside counsel. Last but not least, to avoid these pitfalls, to avoid these traps, choose your friends and associates wisely. <clears throat> what does King Solomon have to say about that? Let's look at Proverbs 13, chapter 20, and it reads like this. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Notice it didn't say about walking by yourself. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. You know, if oftentimes I made the mistake of making the wrong friends. Listen, please don't judge me, but I made the wrong girlfriends at the clubs and lounges. People drinking it up. And I can tell you, a lot of those relationships have gone into disaster. I wonder, for those of you watching this episode right now, can you remember all the buddies and boyfriends and girlfriends you've ever met at a bar, at a club, at a lounge, that translated into valuable relationships that you've evolved financially speaking? It's something that's long lasting. I'm just not talking about for the last year or two. I'm talking about over 10, 15, 20 years. If you have those relationships in mind, because I can tell you this, from my clubbing days, from my days at the lounge, again, please don't judge me. I found the Lord late in my life, but thank God I did. But I chose my friends unwisely. I chose my friends with their clout and their excess, which is good if you use it for positive type of things. But the same thing could go opposite if you use it for other intentions. So consider the people that you walk with, the people that you roll with, because the old saying goes, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are and where you're going and how potentially you might end up. So that being said, guys, I love your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your follow-ups. Drop them in the comment section below. Again, later on this week, we'll be interviewing Rabbi Lappin, who wrote the book, Business Secrets from the Bible. I believe you're going to get a lot of value from this conversation. I could have spoke with him for another couple hours without stopping. That's how much our conversation went. I think you might see that too as well. And so stay tuned to our channel here when we release that episode coming here fairly shortly. With that being said, guys, if you'd like to check out more videos to complement this episode, check out this video right here, which is the fastest way to lose your money. The second video for you to watch is five biblical principles that will keep you broke forever. And I hope you avoid these as well. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I appreciate you guys. We're about to near 100,000 subscribers. Please make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I, I think we got to run a contest to make sure we get to 100,000 subs. Let me know what you guys think. Should we run another contest to help our channel get to 100,000 subscribers? We're about to get there anyway. Maybe we run a contest to 150,000 subscribers. How's that? So maybe one might do that too as well. I'd love to know your thoughts, feedback. Let me know I'm doing this for you. That being said, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.